doing down here? I just uh, wanted to talk to you. Hello? You have seven days to complete the task. Hey, it's Wesleyana. Welcome back to the channel or welcome if you're new here. I have not done an intro like that in a hot minute. Yeah, I thought maybe we could just take it back and do a nice little sit down chat video. You might see my background has changed since I've done one of these, but I wanted to go over a topic very near and dear to my heart, which is journaling. I'm sure you've heard about journaling before. Um, it's not some big secret. And if you clicked on this video, I'm assuming you have had trouble either getting started or keeping the habit consistent. So as someone who has been doing this for over a decade now, I just kind of wanted to sit down and talk about some of the tips and mindsets that have really helped me stay consistent, as well as talk about the different types of journaling, because a lot of people tend to think that it's all about just writing what you're feeling or documenting your day. And although that's a lot of what I do, it's not necessarily the only way that you can approach this. So yes, I know that a blank page can be scary, but I promise by the end of this, you are gonna have the confidence to get started in your own journaling journey. Yeah, okay, anyway, um, enough of that, let's get started with the video. Now, number one, number one, set your expectations low. I think a lot of us have this idea that we're gonna fill up this huge, beautiful journal with all of these great insights and come up with these great new ideas and intricacies about ourselves and we're just gonna understand ourselves on such a better level and there's so much self-discovery and we're gonna become these Tumblr girls and just, you know what I mean, right? Yeah, it doesn't have to be that. And I think this is probably the number one place where a lot of people go wrong and why they start to hate it and write one page and then never come back to it again. If you've ever done therapy, then you'll know, unless you've been court mandated. Therapy is not something that you should feel forced to do. It's something you're doing for yourself. It is self-care. It's something you look forward to and it's a positive part of your life. So it's not something like, you know, work or obligations where you kind of have to do it just to survive. And you should be treating journaling in the same way because journaling is its own form of self-therapy. So instead of thinking about it as this habit where I have to write 10 pages a day and I can't ever miss a day, think about it as, as literally self-care, as a treat, as something that you get to do when you're done with work, when you're done with all your other obligations and you have time for yourself. Go to a park, go to your favorite coffee shop, you know, make your favorite drink at home, sit at your desk, clear your space. It really should be a positive factor in your life and if it's not then that needs to change because if you don't have a positive relationship with it then it's not going to be a habit that sticks and it's going to be something that you resent in the long run and the other part of this conversation is thinking that journaling has to look a certain way or be a certain way in order for it to be successful i think we all get really intimidated because we think that every single morning we sit down to write we're gonna have to come up with these crazy insights and discover something about ourselves and it's not always going to be like that sometimes you're going to sit down write something very arbitrary and that'll be it and that's all part of the process because if you don't sit down and show up every day and go through maybe more of the boring days and the bad days you're never gonna get to the good stuff it's like that quote that says inspiration always strikes for people who are hard at work something like that so just like any creative mental self-care practice like exercising, drawing, whatever it is, you're gonna have to show up every day. You're not always gonna see results, but you know in the long run, you're leading to positive change. I mean, I can even tell you, I'll try and find some examples right here, but I have written literally the lamest entries of all time in my day one. And this is the secret to my success of how I've written in it every single day since 2012. Because if I had to write this, yeah, that wouldn't have happened. The second biggest tip I have for you that is an absolute must if you're gonna get started is to understand your intentions and your specific motivations for doing this. And if you don't have a good answer for this other than I think I should do it, other people are doing it on TikTok, it's not gonna stick. Now, motivation can be very nuanced. There's tons of reasons why someone might wanna get into this. Again, there's plenty of ways to journal. It's gonna be different from one person to the next, but personally, I think the biggest reason why everyone should be doing this is because it's one of the only ways that you can consistently 
communicate with your present, past, and future selves. When you write something and future you sees it, you are literally sending a message to that version of yourself in the future. That's wild. I remember when I turned 30, I'd written a letter to myself when I was 18 years old. I had completely forgotten about it. And that letter showed up in my inbox to 30 year old self. Words cannot describe how emotional and special that feeling is seeing a version of you from so long ago speak to the person you are now. And I mean, I'm getting emotional even just thinking about it. Obviously I cried a lot when this was happening. And that's not the only time that that's happened. I mean, I documented this whole era in 2021 where I was going through one of my worst depression spells. It's on video if you wanna watch it, it's very cringy, but I was also writing about it in a journal. And when it came to the end of the year and I was doing my reflection and I'd been a better place for about six months now, it wasn't until I was flipping through those old entries and those old reflections that I realized what a darn place I was in. I would have thought that I was fine, but looking back on it compared to the person I was in that moment, I mean, there's just so much to learn and so much to discover about yourself if you're paying attention. That's all journaling really is. It's paying attention to the person you are now, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what you're going through, using those insights to inspire gratitude, inspire change, to make sure that you are on the track to becoming the person that you wanna be. It's really hard to overemphasize how special of an experience this is until you've experienced it yourself. Now that being said, if everything I just said before sounds too woo woo or you don't have the patience for it because you know all of our attention spans are like this nowadays, that's fine. Even if you burn your journals, even if you burn what you write, you're still gonna get a lot of benefit from it. It's still a great way to release thoughts, emotions, tension, great way to reflect, problem solve. There's plenty of instant right here, right now benefits as well. My point is, Think about why you're doing this. Think about what you're trying to get out of it and keep that intention in mind because it'll really help to guide your practice in the long run. Speaking of journaling with intention, choosing the right supplies is a key part of any writing practice, which is where today's sponsor, Papier, comes in. They're an online brand that specializes in sustainable and customizable stationery like these beautiful journals and planners. I find journaling to be a very personal practice and having notebooks that feel unique to my life and personality is an important part of it. The first thing that stood out to me about their selection was just how many options they have to suit every aesthetic, whether you're looking for something more artsy, graphic, or just simple and minimalist. The best part is that they allow you to fully customize your notebooks with your name, the year, or even change up the title and typography completely. This is one of the reasons why their journals also make such unique gifts. I actually discovered them back in 2020 when I was looking for a birthday present for a friend. Papier also stands out because of their emphasis on sustainability. And they're also created with paper from sustainably managed forests and delivered in plastic-free packaging. So make sure to kick off fall with a new planner or journal by heading to papier.com and using my discount code for 15% off or by visiting the link in the description of this video. Hey, um... Are you still awake? I know I've been uh, rambling for a while, so I'm just gonna jump into the next two tips really quick. If you're somebody who struggles with writer's block, the best ways I found to combat that is number one, use a prompt, use guided journaling. Two, try practicing stream of consciousness journaling. This has actually helped me a lot. If you know morning pages, which we'll get into later, it's a version of this, but it's essentially just writing without thinking. So instead of asking yourself, oh, what should I write today? I don't know, blah, blah, blah. You literally write that on paper. Say, eh, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be writing today. So I'm just writing right now. And I'm writing with this pen that I really like on this piece of paper on this journal that I just got from Amazon and it's kind of hot in here. I don't know if I should turn on the AC. Just do that. And then eventually you will get somewhere or you won't and at least you tried. Third option is to just doodle. Instead of thinking about, you know, writing, if that's really intimidating, just start putting lines on the page, making little stars and squigglies or whatever you want. Anyway, that is my mini course on writer's block. You shouldn't have to struggle with it now. And then the other tip is in choosing supplies. I love nice journals. I love nice stationery. It's like a really weird, hobby of mine, don't know where it comes from. The point is, if you are a perfectionist, this is not a good path for you to go down. Because if you have this beautiful $30 moleskin journal, you're just gonna be sitting there thinking, oh my God, I need to write this perfectly. I can't like waste a page. I can't throw out this. And it's just gonna mess with your head and all sorts of stuff. So honestly, I actually ended up buying a $2 journal that I use as my brain dump diary. And if I just want to write stupid thoughts and I don't have to feel like I am wasting money or ruining something that was so aesthetic and beautiful and that I wanna post on my Instagram. So I'm not saying don't get a nice journal and a nice pen. You know, make sure you have something else that you can tear apart if you're someone who's gonna let that get in the way. 
that's all. Oh, also, almost forgot. When it comes to the question of analog versus digital journaling, analog being paper and pen. I don't know why I had to say it like that. Really, neither is better or worse than the other. I use both forms. Um, my day one is obviously digital. I like using it for documentation because it is searchable, editable, easy to pull in photos and other media. I can also just pull up my phone and log an entry on the subway home. So it's been really great for me, but I do have a paper journal, a couple paper journals, because I prefer them more for reflecting and brainstorming, mind mapping, just something about having the flexibility of paper and being able to really write anywhere you want and also not being able to edit when you are trying to work out your thoughts I think that's also really helpful too so you can kind of decide what works better for you but just a quick little note to keep in mind now we're moving on to part two which is the ways of journaling now the first type of journaling is probably the one that you are most familiar with which is simply just documenting your thoughts and feelings in this case you're really just acting as your own therapist. So you're asking yourself, why do I feel this way? What is maybe causing me to feel this way? Are there any underlying reasons why I might feel this way? It's really just digging into your feelings, trying to ask why, 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 till you get to the core of whatever it is that you are working through. Overall, it's really just a practice of being able to articulate your emotions so that you understand them better. It's also a very good opportunity to work in some problem solving. So for example, if you are anxious about an upcoming social event, you can ask yourself, why am I anxious? What about this is making me nervous? What is the worst that's gonna happen if my fears come true and is it something I can handle? This is a really great candidate for prompted journaling or guided journaling, which is the second form that you're probably really familiar with, where you essentially just take a list of prompts and questions and answer them. Mostly people tend to divide guided journaling into either daily, weekly, or monthly reflections. So if it's daily, you can ask yourself, what is the one thing that would make today a success? What mindset do I want to bring with me today? And what are three wins from today, if you journal at night? If you do weekly, you can ask yourself, what went well? What didn't go so well? What is my main focus for this upcoming week? If you do monthly, you can ask yourself, what were my favorite moments from this month? Did I achieve my goals? What are my goals next month? Or how can I improve for next month? And then the third most common type of journaling that you've probably already heard of is just simply documenting. So a lot of people will just write about what happened in their day, things that they wanna remember, special moments. A lot of the times this can be combined with reflective journaling as well. So you might say what was going on and then how you feel about it and maybe try and problem solve a little bit. So there's definitely a lot of overlap. I would say documenting is probably my primary form of journaling and it's one of my biggest motivations for doing you know, this and my day one and pretty much everything I do because I have some sort of subconscious fear that all of the good moments and the lessons and challenges that I experience in my life are going to somehow be forgotten if I don't memorialize them in some way. So probably something I need to unpack in therapy or journaling. Also within this category, there are plenty of other more niche ways to document your day. It doesn't just have to be a log of what happened. A lot of people like doing mood trackers, habit trackers, food diaries, dream trackers, travel logs. There's also a concept called homework for life from Storyworthy. Uh, that's a really great one if you're a writer or a content creator. So there's plenty of other ways that you can also document if you don't wanna just talk about all the boring crap that you did all day. Now, in addition to all of those traditional ways of journaling, which are, again, all great, I do all of those, there are so many other ways you can use a journal, one of which is to use it for brain dumping or brainstorming. I actually have a daily note on my phone that I just write whatever comes into my head as the day goes on, if it's an idea or a to-do I have to do, you know, an event coming up, and then I process that on a weekly basis so I know everything is captured in one place. You can also do brain dumping on specific occasions, like if you're trying to mind map for goals for the upcoming year, you're trying to come up with branding for your business, all of these are really great reasons to use a journal. And then there's also something called Morning Pages, which is by, I believe, Julia Cameron. Um, it's in a book called The Artist's Way. And the concept is every morning when you wake up before you do anything, you sit down to write three pages, freehand, end to paper, stream of consciousness. You don't stop. It can be junk, it can be nonsense, or it can be the next 
Shakespearean masterpiece, but the only point is you're showing up for your practice. You are putting out whatever is in your head upon waking up in the morning, and that's also something that a lot of people have found really beneficial. If they struggle with more, you know, like guided, stricter type of writing styles. Another great thing you can do is to create a commonplace book. So commonplace books are essentially just a collection of all the information that you collect and find interesting so that you can start to find little connections or notes between all of the quotes and books, articles, ideas you might have. You just put it all into there. I actually do this in Notion. That's what my field notes page is essentially, but a lot of people like doing this by pen and paper and just, you know, carrying around a little journal with them. You can do it anyway under the sun but I think this is a really great way to just sort of capture and organize knowledge and especially if you are someone who is in a creative field or you're involved in research or academia or in school this is just a really great way to keep your mind moving and to make sure that you're freshly coming up with ideas and actively taking in the information that you process now another type of journaling that i am personally a very big fan of is law of attraction journaling there's some parts of this that are like a little bit woo woo for me especially as a very logical INTJ type of personality. Whether or not you believe in, you know, the universe and energy and all this stuff, I do think there's something to be said about how your intentions and the energy you put out affects what comes back to you. And there's plenty of ways you can do this. You may have heard of affirmations and manifestations. It's essentially just writing out positive thoughts about yourself that you want to believe that you might not yet and just making sure that you're writing it every day, reviewing it every day until it eventually becomes a true belief. Again, some people think that, you know, the universe is coming to you with these things because you wrote it down personally. I just believe that if you are putting yourself in a mindset to these things and to believe that you deserve it and that it's possible, which is what's happening when you're writing, I am going to be a millionaire one day or whatever it is, that has an effect on how you act and the opportunities you invite into your life. If you're someone who doesn't believe that you can do YouTube even though you really want to, then when your friend comes to you and says, hey, I really would love for you to help me with this video project, you're going to say, ah, oh, no, I'm not good to camera as I can. Versus if you've been telling yourself every day that you are going to be a big YouTuber, you're going to say, oh, yeah, of course, I'm going to be a big YouTuber one day. Why wouldn't I take this opportunity? And on the opposite end of that spectrum, you can also do releasing. So you'll say things that you don't necessarily like and might be a little more negative and you just choose to let go of it. So I'm releasing jealousy of my friend. I'm releasing anxiety from my relationship. I would also consider gratitude practice to be under this umbrella as well. It's exactly what it sounds like. You just sit down and write what you're grateful for. I'm grateful for a healthy body, grateful for this beautiful weather, grateful to live in New York in this lovely apartment. All of this is really just training your brain to see the positives in your life versus focusing on the negatives. Now the final form of journaling I want to go over today is planning. So essentially using a journal to help plan your days, weeks, months, years, goals, whatever it is. This can include bullet journals, it can include something like Notion, or it can also include a traditional paper planner. Now if there's one thing I want you to take away from this entire video, it's that journaling should be personalized to you. How often you do it, what kind of habit you make out of it, what you choose to do with your practice, how you journal, where you journal, what you're journaling about. This is all unique to the individual and don't think that just because someone is doing it a different way on social media or your friends are doing it a different way that you have to do that as well. You don't even have to do journaling in the traditional sense. If you don't like writing, you can do art journals, you can do scrapbooks, Twitter, Instagram, all of that counts as forms of journaling and reflection and documenting. I mean, I've seen people literally make K-pop journals to talk about K-pop stars and the songs they're listening to. I've written a Muay Thai journal to track my progress in training. So really just take this as a tool that can be useful for you in your own life and whatever you need it for. Your journal is always gonna be there for you, just like your best friend, your partner, your family, and me, which is why you should like this video and subscribe. So if you've enjoyed this video and you wanna learn more about my own journaling practice, you should watch this video next.